<laughs> yeah, and then you were in the Lost Boys. Let's talk about the Lost Boys now. You know, that's the big one. Yeah, exactly. That's what Frog we're Boy. Too. So Lost Boys was this crazy thing where it's like all of a sudden it was a different. I was in a different league, you know. And so I was auditioning a bunch. I had seen this casting director before. Marianne Doherty was kind of known for discovering people, and so I think I was on I was on her radar. I had you know gotten close on another movie recently before that. Also Schumacher, uh, the director, you know Joel Schumacher, he he was good friends with my acting teacher, which was great, and he spoke at my acting class. And even though I didn't, you know, it's like a director like Joel Schumacher speaking at an acting class, you know, everybody's like wanted to ask a question, you know, wanting to like, you know introduced themselves to Joel Schumacher. He had just done, he had done um, St. Almost Fire. So there was, he was really big at that point. And, um, and I didn't really get to ask a question. I sort of felt like I blew it, you know, whatever. But then when this came up and I met him, I was able to talk about that and talk about my teacher. And, you know, so we had some common ground there, you know, so yeah. that's kind of was cool, you know. And then I saw Feldman in the, in, in the callback, I saw Feldman in the, the lobby. That's where I met Feldman. Actually, at the and, callback. Yeah, at the callback. So it was like they saw me. Did and, you guys read it together? Yeah, we ended up reading together for oh, the callback. Okay. Yeah, yeah, so kind of they were they were pairing us. You know mm -hmm. that we didn't realize it, but so what happened is they they loved me right away. Like Schumacher and I really connected. I was just like I was on my game at that time. I had. I wore like my dad's military jacket, which is what they recreated in the movie, actually, like the dice on the sleeve kind of thing. It was cool. And I was like, I had a bit of swagger. I was doing 100 push ups a night, was like my thing. And so I, I was built pretty, I had a pretty good build. Yeah. And, and I was like, do you want to punch me? You know, I was like, you know, I was like 15 at the time, you know, just cocky. <laughs> and, you know, like, punch me. Come on, punch me. <laughs> you know, it's like any, anything, you know, anything you can do in the room, you know what I mean? Like yeah. just to get your you notice or whatever. So he, he loved all that and he loved my kind of vibe and stuff i was like uh so there was this wave and i i was talking to keith Co you know who keith coogan is uh, he was in like adventures in babysitting and the he in the babysitter's dead you know that one the don't tell mom the babysitter's dead oh yeah he yeah, was yeah. in so many things like when i was growing up i saw him everywhere so i just did a, a a little interview with him where i was interviewing him and we were talking about the fact that when he was young being a child actor was about just, it was called jump and shout. This is like a thing that they talked about. Jump on your mark and shout your line. And that was it. Uh. And then, you know, that was like, <laughs> that was all that was expected from the, you know, the kid actors. So in the 80s, what started happening is this wave of New York actors started coming in. And I wasn't a New York actor, but I was, my teacher was a New Yorker. I was trying to be a New Yorker. I loved like Pacino and, you know, I was like, Almost pretending to be a New Yorker, kind yeah. of, and judging by your Wikipedia. Yeah, exactly. Here it works. <laughs> 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 I can finally convince them. You know, <laughs> <laughs> the world, the world <laughs> believes me now. So, um, yeah. So, so I was this. I had this kind of like tough vibe. You know, like the vibe I had in the movie. It's like it wasn't really who I was at the time. I was a kind of a little nerdier kid than that. But I just was kind of like playing that New York kid a little bit, you know? So that's, I think, what did it for me. That's what got me into the movie, you know? But but also Feldman, um, Feldman and I connected, and that was big for Schumacher really wanted that connection. Do you remember what you guys did in the audition? Or, like, anything that stands out that's like, oh, that's how, yeah, I we think, got that. I think the audition, <laughs> I think the audition was when we first started the thing of, like, looking, checking in with each other, you know, that, that if you see, if you look at the movie that, we always and Joel then would like bring it up that some so he, you know Sam uh, Corey Haim would say something absurd or whatever you know or that we thought was absurd and we would look at each other and then we would <laughs> and I think that is something we kind of developed from the audition which yeah. was cool Feldman's really interesting I mean he's a really actually fun actor to work with it's always been really fun for me because he's really creative and he's it was a lot of fun you know working with him. Uh, you worked with a lot of other actors on that movie too, but you said uh, how many scenes were you in, or did you work with everybody? Because there's a lot of actors in the Lost Boys. Like, yeah, so like Kiefer, unfortunately, was someone I didn't work with that much. We yeah. have a one moment where we like pull his hand into the light and it burns. You know, if y'all remember <laughs> that, and and it was cool and everything. But and then I remember on set uh, hearing him talk about how he wanted to kill the guy on the beach, how how he wanted to like bite his head. 
you know, and so that's the only interaction I had with Kiefer, those two moments. <laughs> <laughs> and then, but so he chose how to. He chose how to end his scene. Or well, how he, to, you know, Joel was always talking about wanting input from us. You know, he wanted like, you know, you know, what kind of equipment do we want as Frog Brothers? And I assume they're just doing the same thing with the Lost Boys of like, you know, a lot of the Lost Boys performance was was just them hanging out and doing stuff and maybe Joel would suggest something and they would do something cool. You know, there wasn't that much dialogue in those scenes, you know, like yeah. Billy worth, I think has one line in the whole thing, but he's like everywhere. You know, you think of lost boys, you think of Billy worth, you know? So, and that's, I think how, one line? what's that? Yeah. One line. Yeah. One line. <laughs> um, you missed sucker. I think is his only line. <laughs> or, yeah. With, with the death by Syria thing. You know? <laughs> he's like the face of it. Yeah. You know, yeah, exactly. Like he, everybody, you know, so, it's funny, you know, and so he Joel was into that kind of uh, input, and so I think that's what happened is is that you know Kiefer was like, you know, I want to I want it, that bald guy, I want to I want to bite his head. You know? so, when you guys shot it, did you, were you like it's gonna be it's gonna be a great movie, people are gonna love this, or were you like all right, know. it's another job, like you were just like yeah, it was really just another job. I mean, for me, it was a big movie, yeah, but. I, there's no way to know because you start thinking that something's going to be iconic or something and then it's and then it's going to flop, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. you get self-conscious about it and you're like, Oh, is this, let me say this, this line iconically, you know, so you just got to do it. You got to stay focused and do it. I mean, you know, when any, it came out, it was a big hit when it came out, like in the theaters, it was pretty big. I mean, it, it How'd was like, I think it, it didn't blow it out of the water. They didn't, they didn't blow it out of the water that summer when, when it came out. Yeah. It wasn't until it was on video. It, became, it was number one video for years, and that's really where its fame came from. I mean, people, people loved it when it came out, but it wasn't, it wasn't like, you know, it was only running, I think. It only ran for, I think, three weeks or something like yeah. that. Is that. Was that like your big, you had a big red carpet moment on when it came out? You guys did all that? Like, you know was what? that an 80s movie? Premiere type of situation. Did you, you know how to party that? by that point? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. See, this is it. I didn't know how to party by that point, and I didn't quite realize the significance of the premiere. And so I was in New Jersey doing a play, doing uh, Brighton Beach Memoirs. I don't know if you've heard of that play. Neil Simon, you know, playwright, big comedy playwright. And I was off doing theater. I was like, I'm a theater guy. I'm, I did this movie, and that's coming out, and I'm doing theater. I didn't quite realize that I should have been there at the premiere. So, oh, wow. So I kind of missed that moment. The agent hmm. didn't tell you you need to be no, there? No, I mean, they were like, well, you can fly back for the premiere. And I was like, ah, no, I, whatever. I, they really should have just been like, you need to be at the freaking premiere. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. I mean? So that's no. what you mean by it maybe held you back a little bit by yeah, not knowing. I didn't, I didn't understand that aspect of it. That, that like, to me, it was about doing a good job on set. I knew my lines. I'm a good actor. You know, like I'm, I'm studying my part, you know, I didn't quite realize that a lot of the action, a lot of the other jobs come from, you know, you after doing cocaine in the room. You know, you don't got this job. You start cocaine. Great. Let's do another job, man. Like, wait a second. The studious guys back in the room. Exactly. I mean, and what I kind of, realize is that it's all partying i mean you know to use that term maybe it seems like almost like dated like in the 90s we use that term a lot you know but it's like it's all partying you, you know i looked at i have this this sort of technique i've developed that i call the george clooney technique where i'm you know out in public if you're on a red carpet or whatever you're just partying you're just partying i, I watched george clooney do it you know, and it's like at the Oscars, that's all he's doing. He's partying. There's a camera. He's talking to the camera like it's a, someone at the party. You know, this kind of thing. He's asking questions like he would do to be charming, whatever. You know what I mean? That's all it is. And I think that's what life is, really. And that's what I think this business is. I don't know. These are big statements now. No, no. I don't need to, like, make, you know, these huge statements. But I kind of think that that's what it's about. Now it's about socializing yeah, and socializing connecting the people. and making exactly. connections and right. being around the parties. Even if you're, you know what I mean? Maybe you just... Throw some water in your drink. Like, yeah, yeah, sure, yeah, yeah, sure. I'm out here you're partying. Pretend you're partying. Act yeah, a little exactly. woozy, you know? <laughs> You'll be fine. Get yeah. some jobs. Because I yeah. have people tell me that. It's like, ah, the people that work on, you know, sets and all that stuff, they party all the time. It's like, that, there's no way that you can yeah. be productive doing all that shit. But I guess, you know? I think it's part of it. And, you know, I, I was like, um, you know, as it's kind of, this is kind of related, but I did a movie last year um, uh, called Mr. Manhattan. It's a Christmas kind of movie. It's going to be coming out, even though it's a Christmas movie. It's coming out in June, I think. But, you know, it's a, 
a feel good kind of thing like that. And the the two leads were married, really talented, um, Carlos and Alexa Vega. Um, Carlos is from the that band Big Time Rush, you know, which I didn't follow, but he's a great guy, great guy, brilliant actor. And and she was like. It's, it's some really emotional stuff. And she was like, I can't be emotional between takes if I'm do, being emotional on camera, which was something really interesting that I heard. A lot of people are like, I got to keep it going, you know? Yeah. And so I think there's something to that, that you almost have to party as hard as you're working mm. to kind of balance it out. 